so I can see where these uh, the actual lace for the glove goes and what I'm going to do, I'm just going to, actually I'm going to make two holes here it's going to, going to fit perfectly just start the hole so I can see where I'm going to go so I'm just going to pierce all the way through The good old awl has multiple uses in a framing workshop. We often use things like this. This one's an old chisel that we uh, shape the end down to because a very hard and good point. Far easier if you're going to put screws in and things to just make a little starter hole with one of those than even get the drill out. It's quicker. So there are just two holes there that I'm going to use to thread uh, the lace of the glove through. And I just want to measure actually down from there. So from there down to the bottom lace hole actually I think we're going to go round we'll go round the bottom of the lace so that's about 135 mil so I'm just going to measure down the 135 and I'm going to put a little hole there too So I think uh, just these three holes and actually the laces themselves and a little bit of stainless steel wire threaded up and around and back uh, down into the hole will hold the bottom of the glove and the lace itself will hold the top. That way we can just use what's on the glove itself to hold it in place rather than actually uh, harming the piece of memorabilia in any way. Something you need to be considerate of if you're actually framing anything that is a collectible is the archival nature of the framing package and so we're using all acid free materials uh, there's nothing that's going to actually contact the glove that's going to cause any harm and uh, everything is spaced we're using a UV filtering glass so that nothing will fade and the person who actually gets this glove is going to have a lifetime memento and it's important to choose the right materials if you want your framing to last. So as we work through, I try to make everything reversible. So if they ever needed to get this glove out again, they can take it out and it should be in identical condition as to when it was given to me in the first place. So I'm gonna tie it through there, put a little bit of wire. We'll cut a bit of wire off there. I think wire's gonna work well. It should be stable. You shouldn't use things like nylon or, you know, usually whenever you're using uh, stitching things, you generally use the same material that you would, um, that the work would be made from. So if you're stretching a fabric piece, for example, that's made of cotton, you'd use cotton threads. If you're using linen, you'd use linen threads. If you're using silk, you'd use silk threads. And normally you use ballpoint pin and needles. And the ballpoint pushes the fabric apart rather than pierces and cuts. Uh, in this case, what we're going to do, we're going to actually put the wire in and around the bottom of the lacing there. So I'm just going to run, run that piece of, piece of wire around the lace on the bottom. That's going to hold it down there. And I'm just going to thread the other two through the hole. So just going to come up here. That way we can pull that, put it into place. We can take our cable So yeah, wire down the bottom, laces up the top, that's going to hold that glove in place quite well. I can just tie that off as it was in a bow. You just put a little reef knot in that actually because then it can be easily undone.
In fact, I could tape that on, but I think what I might do, I might actually make an additional hole. It's going to sit quite well through one. What I might do, I'm going to come back in and I'll make a separate hole there. That way. We can tie that wire to each other. So yeah, straight in. I can do the same thing. I'm just going to tie, just going to tie the wire off them out of the way. Just to tie the wire off. Again, pretty straightforward there. If someone wants to actually get it out, they can untie the wire, they can untie the knot here. We're just going to leave those inside the frame. I'll actually put a bow on that too, just to keep it together. These pieces are not going to matter. We're going to build a little void where that is actually going to sit, so that you don't, uh, so they don't get in the way. So then that's actually holding that glove into position quite well. So you can see how the glove is going to sit. Except what we're doing is we're going to build this out into the box and line the inside there with the suede. So I'm going to cut the strips that we did before and that's going to line the inside of the box. Now what I want to do is actually square these up and they're going to fit. I've made this so that it'll fit inside these slots in the back of the matting here so it's all going to look really nice and neat and I think I want to put um, the horizontal pieces in first. I need to make an adjustment there on the top. So make a little pencil mark. So with the square, mark off our lines. one on the bottom and you see when we get round to the other bit I've got a short bit here just to show you have a piece sitting here what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut back this top section a little bit we'd actually made that hole prior to putting this piece on so we just need to knock it back a little bit so that we get the size right piece out of there. It's just going to give us a nice snug fit. I don't want it far back from the edge of the bevel. I really want it to look like the bevel of the mat comes in and then it goes straight back into this, uh, into this red box. So we're going to have two pieces there, top and bottom. And then really, we need a, um, a couple of pieces now that are going to match that length. So I think 
one of the easiest ways for me to do this is to use the edge that I've already got there. We might actually take another quick, quick trim at it. So again, just checking how square everything is. It's important in framing to make sure things are square before you actually do things. So I'm just going to cut this like probably one millimetre longer than that opening. And the reason for that is I just want, I don't want to see the edge the white edge of this suede showing. I just want the entire piece of the red to show. So we're going to cut that bit. <laughs> 